What is up guys, welcome to the second episode of the Cassidy to Diamond series, starting off a game against the Lee Sin mid. This is not something you see very often, and he also has Ignite, and yes, it can certainly be very difficult. But luckily you have me to show you how to play out the laning phase. And start the W. You can actually start, you know, all three of his abilities, level 1. But they have a lot of AD it seems like, uh, if all bears are also going AD. But it's a good example of when Rod of Ages can be a great item on Kassadin. Uh, when you need the tankiness. And you can also go for armor items. Yeah, trade it just because you already used his abilities. That's the only reason. We're just gonna focus on farming. And against Lee Sin, make sure you're standing behind the minions. So his Q gets body blocked. And remember that he will constantly try to dash. To uh, his minions. Okay, Gragas is coming, it seems like. Oh, he also flashed. Oh, wow. Well, good job. It's still worth it for sure. So I'm just gonna push this out. He flashed and he's playing with Ignite. It's gonna take a little while before he gets back to lane. That jungle is the volley bearer, so I'm definitely dead if I get caught here. Normally you should just be backing off. You know, being able to fix the wave first, that would be insane. Oh no, she's dead. Never mind. Just recall and CP back. Okay, it's here. And I think I'll be showing the uh, Rod of Ages path here. You know, tankiness is awesome. Against this Bruiser comes. And even against, you know, Assassins. But the reason you don't buy this as well, the Rod of Ages, is because, you know, it takes too long to get your actual items. It takes way too long, so you don't have, you know... It's just going to slow everything down, so you get either the OP item or you get the Rod of Ages. Which is also pretty OP, but it scales a bit slower. I had teleport. Okay. We're just gonna stay back the entire... Danny face, that's all you gotta do. Remember, he's playing with Ignite, so as soon as he gets level 6, that's where the hard part can, you know, potentially begin. And unfortunately, they just stopped auto-attacking. Oh my days, these minions are griefing me. They're actually griefing me big time. Need to get some vision down top side since I don't have my flash up. And always stay behind the minions. If he gets a free Q off onto you, then it's going to be disaster. And don't stay clo too close to his minions either. Because he's just going to uh, dash to them and then he's gonna engage onto you. That's or not. Take the fight. So you also just need to get your ultimate because then you have, you know, that extra safety tool. Onto that, we're just gonna stay as far back as we possibly can. Don't forget he's playing with Ignite. He got low 6 now. You will get counterpicked a lot when you play Cassidy. That's something you have to get used to. Sometimes you might even have to blind pick him like I did right here. Now we got ultimate, so it's a lot safer. Against Lee Sin especially. But what he does here is to get a, you know, the moment he engages, he's gonna install you. He does this because then you cannot dodge his Q. Because he's going to throw out the Q while you're, you know, moving, kicked in the air.
Doing okay, small dress winning. That's not too good, but we have the cast it in. He's so dead. What helps a lot against this matchup is the fact that, you know, Lee Sin spams his ability, so you get your E up very often. The recalls, I'm gonna try to push it. Even better if I can cancel this recall. Gonna get some damage off here. We have CP, so we are safe in that regard. Just keep in mind, you know, keep an eye on your stacks. He does not have flash, I don't need to uh installed out. I got the plate as well. I'm just gonna ping it again just to uh make sure he knows. The OP thing about this item is the fact that it gives you that free level once it's fully stacked. We're gonna get level 16 faster. And he's getting okay. He does not have any um, lethality, so that's good. Just gonna stay behind as usual, gonna go for really short trades where he does not get to land his entire combo. He's gonna heal up with his shield. Be careful of his... Flash into ult where he can kick you into the tower. So you stood on the Gragas, that's perfect. That means he does not have anything up. Oh! Oh, what? I got this. Um, I tried, I reacted a bit too slow, but I tried to uh, ult when Lee Sin was following, so he would end up falling into the uh, Gragas. Alright, we just need to funnel as much gold into me as we can, and we should be good to go. I'll place a ward here. I need a bit more gold for this one. How is my Israel getting tower dove by a Seraph and a Smolder? I think I just sell this so I don't have to wait as long. Ult over this one. But you know, obviously it's a lot weaker spike compared to uh, this item right here. I'm still not sure how to pronounce it, but this item gives you such a broken spike. I have fully stacked all, so I cannot ult in. If I ult in, I won't have any mana to get out. Why is this guy taxing all my XP? Estral is getting demolished. Plane is also losing. None of them are moving, nice. Really blind. Such a blind bunch. Okay, that's perfect. He needs to be careful of this Sarath here. Hopefully that guy is not blind as well. I'm gonna place a ward here so they can see the Volibear if he's here. doing that.
He survives, at least. Estrada is getting completely demolished. What? The CS difference is like Smolder having two kills over Ezreal right now. Through the CS gap alone. So I need to get even more fed. I guess it's there. I cannot ult yet because I have two stacks. I'm gonna wait a little bit and then I can... Uh, That's a good stack on... Got this one. Good thing. Good thing he didn't... He, he knew that he had to give the kill to me, so that's good. Because I need to get as fit as I possibly can right now in order to carry this. I'm gonna walk to the side here so I don't get ulted. I hit by the ults. Nice. Casted yes, in getting all of the kills. That's how you win, guys. Your goal, you know, you want to be last hitting on Casted in. It doesn't mean that you're like stealing everything, but you know, it's in the interest of your team if you get the kills because it means that, you know, Casted in has an easy time of carrying. Perfect. Yes, maybe not as perfect. Nice, we got the Drake. I can CP back. Don't have any more mana. He just has to get hit by the one. Bragas is gonna die for his sins. Don't try to protect an AD carry like this, guys. It's not worth it. Just let him die. He just saved you and then this guy gets caught again. Yikes, man. What a player. What a player. If you have somebody like this, Estrel, don't. Don't die for him, man. He's not worth anything. Right, we're gonna get this one. Since I can afford it straight up. Otherwise, you know, I would have gotten boots into this item. I'll go and check. We'll play Gragas. Nice. Gonna go and protect the tower. No ultimate on the Fiora, so that should help the Ilawi a lot. Ilawi is actually insane against... Like against the uh, Lee Sin. As well as the Volper, because Ilawi shines against the champs who has to... Jump in, in melee range in order to deal damage. Alright, we got level 11. Yes, it's okay, it's not the best. But it's okay. And we also got the uh, small thingies. And Gragas also stole the Herald. He's doing a great job. Small is going to be very annoying, for sure. And there's also an exhaust on... Um, Serath, so it's very risky of me to all-in him. I think we just go up this tower. Oh, is... That's why I hate having Estrel on my team, in these ranks.
You could have used your ultimate, but you uh, refused to. He's still pushing. Can hold me. Nice. He flash over. I think he might have W to a. What? Seems like that is the case. So you see some MR coming in here. That's the hex stringer. I assume it is. But you don't need to buy what stuff yet. You could. It could help a lot if you get a Sonya Sour Glass because then even if you get exhausted, you can just pop that one. And then buy yourself some time. Moldo is not as safe. Against the Kassadin. We're gonna get a Sonyas now. The component I mean. I'm basically Sonyas because you get the active on top. This is to allow me to engage onto these guys in the backline, and I will most definitely get exhausted. It's gonna help me, you know, I use everything, I get exhausted, then I pop this one, and I'll not be able to take any damage. If Israel can farm up what side, I don't know how this can ever happen. It makes no sense. I could go in here, but I'm gonna get exhausted. I'm just gonna get a couple stacks on this. That's fruit here, that's perfect. I'm gonna wait. My ultimate is stacked. Why are these guys staying so far back? There it is. I just get out. Go way too late engaging. I'm not gonna try to save you. No way she loses against the uh, Lee Sin. I don't see that happening. I just TP mid. You need somebody who can help engage early on. Gragas refused to go in. Are actually winning this? I am level 14 um, because I also got... The uh, upgrade from the Rod of Ages. Lawi keeps pushing in, so that's why I like having the Lawi. Having the FK split pusher, she's always going to, you know, have some sort of pressure, even if she's losing the lane. Just that FK pushing. All we need sometimes. I need to be bot right now. But Gragas is there. I can't go bot. It actually sucks for me. Got the tower this way. And um Hilawi could go bot. Because bot is a lot better. And I can take a wave mid. Imagine if they're doing Baron right now. Not. What are they doing? All of them are missing. I'm just gonna farm topside right now to get some uh, CS. You cannot do this all the time in lower ranks because people are gonna get caught everywhere on the map. This guy is a good example. He's a very good example. And 
this Tariq never learns. I don't know why he's following. They're doing the Baron. Who I can flash this. The Smolder survived, which sucks a bit, because that's actually a pretty good flash ult. That's a pretty good one. Uh, it did stop them from doing the Baron. And I'm getting closer to level 16, I think also on this wave. You don't have an AD carry pretty much. Uh, this guy, he would be just as useful if he just went AFK with the way he's playing. But our jungle is good and our top is okay. And we are extremely fit, so it's on us to carry this game. So I'm going to start buying the items towards the white stuff, because a lot more MR coming in right now. And then I just want to go bot. But you can, you can really feel the difference when you're getting Rod of Ages instead of that new item. Gonna get himself caught. Busting, honestly. It's how it goes. Asadon into AD champs. He also has the Hexstringer. You're gonna heal up with a ripoff. I think I just stay because I want to get level 16 ASAP. He has double MR. But still, I'm 8 and 0. But you can see what, what it means. Like, Asadon has a lot of burst damage. But before level 16, the cooldown is relatively high. So if you're not able to one shot them in a single combo, or shortly after that, they can trade back pretty easily. I'm gonna get this one so I can get a control ward. They're gonna get caught, so I'm just gonna TP. I'm pretty sure this Astro is gonna get caught. Yeah, what a surprise. What a surprise. I had no words. I had no words. They're refusing to go in. All of them. I'll play it. Nice, good job. Finally, guys. And we are 16. Awesome. That's not as hard, was it? That's not as hard. And I just waited here, because I knew they were going to push. Now he's not helping with the Baron, sucks a bit. And Tarek is moving towards the Drake. So Gragas is alone at the Baron, and we have no damage onto it. Nice, good job. Let's go for the Drake then. Ilawi decided to get a tower instead of the Baron. It's okay, we are 16 now. So you see, when you don't have that item, your ultimate cooldown is not less than one second. It's the downside that, you know, you lose some ultimate cooldown and also early game pressure. I have Sonya's in 5. 
Why are we fish taken by the way? We had to fight again. Maybe Lowry can get a good ultimate off or something. We can fight while while Fiora is not here. Why is he going in? Oh my days. Terrible fighting by these guys. Absolutely terrible. Alright, we got a white stuff. I cannot reach the backline because these guys are refusing to engage and when they have to engage, when they don't have to engage, they do it. I need, you know, them to stay alive and fight. Because the moment they see me, they're gonna, all of them are gonna start focusing me. I just get chance easy to death. Okay. Try this. But now they're just gonna collapse onto her, I can imagine. I also like to stay up here sometimes. How disgusting that is. Yeah, always grouped up. Good job, Ilari. I saw it. Why did he flash me? Yes, we almost died again. I think I can stay and clean this up if she's not here. Oh, she has MR. Ooh, Estro died again. What a surprise. What a surprise. It's always like they play the safest champ, AD carry in the game, and somehow it's the same, it's that champ they die the most with. Last item is going to be the death cap. That seems like I need to be full items because it's actually, it's actually just me and Ilari. So we are two versus five. The rest of them are getting caught for no reason. And Sarath is going to save his It's also me. And I don't have Sonya, so if I go in and die right here, it's GG's, they're gonna end. That is some damage. Bro, you need... This guy needs to get perma banned. That is the most disgusting player I've seen. Jesus, man. Jesus, man. That is was the mo by far the most disgusting AD carry I've seen in my life. Yikes. You see the limits of Kassadin, even when you got 16. You still need a team. They don't need to... No, they don't need to be fed, but they need to be alive. Because you can't go in 1v5. Not possible. Especially not when they get smaller. But 
Especially not when they get smaller. Gonna get the Drake, nothing we can do about that one. You guys just back off, like what are you doing there? What are these guys doing? We have to get a good engage, you know, just a fight where Gragas splits them up with assaults. Look at this guy ulting himself. You are not going to win with a team like this. There's no way. There's no way. But looks like it's GG's, but just goes to show you can even lose on late game Cassidy. Um with a team like this. And you know, even if they were playing terrible, if we just had the Astral that was not four levels down on the animated carry, it was still winnable. Well, let's head on towards the next game. Alright guys, welcome to the uh, second game here. So it's a bit of a tragic champion select because these guys decided to go AP as well. So we have 3 AP. That means that for example Nasus can just fully atomize MR and then he's going to uh, make all three of us useless. But we do have some okay mixed damage. So you know if I AD carry and such get fed it's okay. But this is pretty terrible. Normally I would dodge in this case but I already dodged a couple times when people, you know, grief in champion select and such, so I cannot afford to do that anymore, otherwise there will be a full hour ban. So let's try to make this work, and it's against a Z, so this is one of the more, or most difficult matchups. Worst one is probably still Tristana, uh, that's a really tragic matchup, as Z is also, um, so I'll try to show, you know, how to play against them. First of all, Le1 stay behind the minions because it's going to reduce the damage of his Q. It has to uh, hit something else first before hitting you. And never push and don't poke too much with your Qs early on. We're going to, you know, trade against them. Make sure he already used his Q. It sucks a bit last hitting <clears throat> early on on Kassadin, especially level 1. Level 2 onwards it's okay because you have your W which helps a lot. But before that your auto attacks do nothing. And don't trade in melee range guys. You know you can use your Q, you can use your E, but don't don't tank his keystone. So don't allow him to get a full combo off. Now this wave is going to push towards him if he stops pushing. And when he gets to level 3, that's where the hard part begins. Even worse when he gets to level 6, of course. But he can trade effectively into you. Right, so now he has his W. So ideally, you want to bait it out, you know, uh, force him to use it in some way. And if you can dodge the shuriken, you're fine to walk up and see us. If you can't, and you get hit by both of them, it's going to end really bad. The jungle is the Nocturne, which is also pretty difficult for Cassidy. Gonna get some vision down. He has two pots left, because he went for longsword. It's okay, he does not have Electrocute, so that's okay. Now that he uses a W, he doesn't have any pressure. So if you wanted to walk up and last hit something, now is the chance to do so. When he gets his W up again, you have to be careful. Because he can just, you know, he can swap positions with his clone and then he can just auto-attack you. And he's going to win it out. 
Because your Q shield is useless, your passive is useless. Honestly, hate when they do this. They walk through their wave here so they can steal XP. When they do this, I don't help them. If they get invaded or something, I don't help. Unless I think I can get a kill for myself, otherwise I, I will not move. Especially not when you play against, you know, a really tough matchup like the Z. You cannot afford to make too many mistakes. He normally... I like to put a couple points into my Q before I start maxing out the E guys, but against a Z, it's not really going to help. I'm just gonna back off here, and if you're ever low HP against an assassin, just back off. Don't stay in the lane. It's complete grief. I'm gonna get this right here. I'm gonna go into Rod of Ages once again, just for the tankiness. You want to be tanky against assassins. Frozen Heart. Another solid item. Also now when they're full AD pretty much, like Cillian doesn't really count. But Frozen Heart is going to be insane. He's probably taking the uh, white crops. So we're about to hit level 6 and Z is as well. And now the real hard part begins. Actually, I want to push this out, because it's going to push towards him anyways, so I don't want to like slow push. He almost died top. He almost died to a little 5 Nasus. So he is level 6 now, you see, he has the Brutalizer. It's a lot of AD, it's ability, you know, lethality. And I think he also gets ability haste, yeah he does. So this is something you don't want to mess with. It's only a matter of time before he starts running it up. So, once again, we are in a rush here. But our bot lane is doing great. Unlike last game where they completely ran it down. Now I'm taking trades when he misses his W, when he messed that one up. I yeah, just let him die. He's too dumb. Don't bother moving for these apes. Nice, he did get a kill with the uh, ignite. I'm not gonna walk up to it. I don't care. I don't think Z ults it. He probably just uses W. I'm gonna go for short trace like this. What is this guy doing? What is my man doing? So if Zed has his ignite up, I'm actually within lethal range right now. If he has enough energy for a full combo. So just use your potions immediately. I'm gonna place a ward here. He did not see the Cillian walking up, so she's probably going to die as well. Goodbye to her, just let her die. Don't follow these clowns. It's the big mistake I see is that you just try to help too much. You cannot afford to do that, and you don't help these like dumb mistakes they're making. Just let them die, guys. They're not worth anything. Okay, Nocturne is level 6. That is getting two kills, but that was from straight up running it down. So it, this is a pretty realistic game of what happens in a normal soul queue game. But I am definitely going to get Frozen Heart this game, guys. I think I might get it as the um, third item. Nice. 
Alright, so is that two? I think. Maybe not. Just out farming in the jungle, even though she has been uh, running it down. That's okay. And we have the massive CS gap, so he got a full item right now because he got two kills right, so... Yes, we have to be extremely cautious. And he'll be allowed to roam now, but that's their own fault. They entered him, so... They can have fun with us, we're still gonna focus on just farming. That's the only thing we care about. I thought he was going to uh, W forward. Use this as an opportunity. Remember, against an assassin, you're going to be within lethal range if you're like 70% HP or something like that. So if you have any pots, use the melee on against assassins. You know, in a lot of other matchups, you'll probably save it until you are a bit low HP, but against assassins, just stay healthy. So I'm using one right now. If you run the other AP item, and yes, it is OP, issue being is that you're very squishy. You don't want to be that against an assassin. You want to be tanky, and they also have Nocturne right now, which I also have to watch out for. I'm not gonna step up and attack, I'm just gonna queue this cannon. I'm gonna stay pretty far back. I'm not getting ulted, that's good. The bot lane. Ooh, it's a flash out on the Cillian. Then is going to scale up really nicely. So if I ult in right here, do not ult in. If you ult in, he's gonna ult you and you will not be able to get out. So I think this item also uh, slows right? Yeah, it does. It slows as well, so you are not getting out. But do not ult. It's 4.3 seconds. That's more than enough time for him to get everything off onto you. Even... How do I have a shot now? What? has the ult to get out. Has to stay further back. Yes, you got the drag, it's fine. He's getting really fat. That's how it goes. And I have enough gold for the Rod of Ages. I actually want to base as soon as possible. I'm also going in. She might die as well, so I'm just gonna push in case Zed is trying to uh, get that kill as well. Nocturne, wherever it is. Right, got another plate. You gonna go ahead and recall right here. You could get a Sigar Sangat, normally you would do that guys, but you know, they made it so much more expensive. I'm just gonna get the armor component for now. He has a serrated, serrated dirk as well. So anyone who gets caught by his combo is going to get blasted. And he also has a double buff. I'm not gonna ping her. No point. She's going to die anyways. If we have Mordekaiser, we can. Because he can ult the Zed or somebody. But Nocturne ultimate is up right now. If the Nasus comes, we just have to run away. Nocturne ult is up, so don't ult in. Do not do that even if... His ultimate was not up, because we are playing against a extremely fed Zed right now. That's fine. Just queuing right here for the shield. Joanna might die if she does not have smite. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she's dead, I think. Don't follow. This is how you get to high low. Don't follow these stupid mistakes these guys are making. You're just focusing on your spikes. And as Kassadin, your goal is just to farm up. That's a fat Nasus, like I said early on. You can always predict like this is going to happen, especially if they pick a Mordekaiser into a Nasus. 
He's already losing Elyon, so he's not going to win at any point. And this Nasus is going to stack up on MR at some point. So we rely on our bot lane being fed and luckily they are doing a great job. I'm just gonna keep pushing. Whenever he roams, I'm just gonna push. Just because I assume he does not have his ultimate up. If he does, it's bad. I will probably die, even if I flash away. I still have a shot down. Because of the CS difference. Look at that CS difference. That's because I did not move, guys. I did not move at any point. How did this guy win? I think Nasus overstayed, probably. So yes, I need to be even more careful. And this is a good example of when you're going armor boots. I hope this Rosanna is not going to make the same mistake as the Shivana. Let's get this now. Let's just get it. Why not? If it helps me survive. And they're also full AD. So it's gonna help me, you know, if Nocturne runs in and ults me, it's gonna help me survive. And yeah, he did make the same mistake. There's no cure for these type of guys. They are just gonna be permanently stupid. That's why I don't move. So it's an example of a game where he just he gets donated kills. He's not playing good or anything. He's just getting them donated. And this is what happens a lot. It happens a lot for me. It happens a lot for you guys when you play scaling champs. That's the perfect game to show, you know, why you don't just follow people when they're getting caught. Look at that CS I have. It's more than 10 CS per minute right now. I'm level ahead. And when this item is stacked, that's going to be another lead as well. Armor is really nice. I'm also getting some mana. Your ultimate also scales off of mana. So, you're getting a bit of damage as well, although not much, but it's helping you survive. Is she gonna try to uh, contest? Seems like she is. Right. Back to Shivana. I actually like to get this blue buff, that would be really nice to have. Our bot lane is pushing top side, it's fine. They have to watch out for the Z though, he might just go for them. Okay, he's mid. We still need a bit more gold for this Frozen Heart here. It's such a massive item when you are playing against a full AD comp and they also have assassins who are getting fed. It's a huge item. And yes, you're losing out on some damage guys, but if you can survive, skill up, and actually tank without getting one shot, it is worth it. That is even better. Go for this misfortune. I'm not the one getting altered. I don't jump until, for example, if Noxon ults me, I don't jump until he reach me. Because otherwise he's just gonna fall up all the way. Let's see if we can take him here. Oh my day, she took the kill. Blows. But she's fed, so I don't mind. Not mind. I can go top. Just TP top side. Gonna get the lens. We are farming up really nicely, and that's all you have to do. Don't have to worry about anything else. And you know, we're clear against him for now. But he's gonna dumpster us if we walk within range, obviously. He has the Triforce. You don't mess with an Asus who has this item. But he spams abilities, so you get your E up a lot faster. 
as long as you stop him from taking towers, it's fine. So we can just trade CS and it's perfect. And CS per minute still. No one else is even close, that's why I'm sitting on the shutdown. Because our team is also ahead. If your team is ahead, even though you have no kills. Then yes, you will have a gold bound team. Alright, we're gonna have the frozen heart and after that I'm gonna buy the Archangels. So it's a good example of when I like to go for Rod of Ages. That, you know, when you need to be tanky against a team who can burst you down in a very short amount of time. I think we should have somebody who went bot. Can I get this one? Yeah, Zed is not pushing. That's actually pretty lucky. Ooh, that's a fight about to start. We need Mordekaiser to go top so he can hold. Then I just continue farming. And once again, I'm not moving for anything. Unless I think I can get a kill. And it does not mess me up. Otherwise, I don't move. I don't care if my team is going to die. It's how you have to be when you play these hyper-skilling champs. Something a lot of people fail to understand. That's why I've been able to climb to, you know, really high ranks. Alright, let's move now. Looking really good now. Go for the uh, misfortune. I think Trusana can deal with that, right? And up here. Alright, that's fine. I am getting kills, that's all that matters. And once we have the Archangels, I'm gonna have this one um, transformed immediately. We are on scaling duty right now, and the Frozen Heart guys, it's insane. It's gonna allow you to tank so much. You get altered by a Fed Nocturne. You're not gonna get to like 20% HP. Same thing against Zed. You can actually afford to tank. But yes, you lose some damage, but you are a lot tankier, so you can frontline. And good thing, it also gives you ability haste, so it's actually not too bad. It's a pretty solid item. I used to buy this a lot. Last season 2. Look at how much I'm tanking. Is that not insane or what? I'm thinking about going in. But I think we find. I think we're good. And we are 16, highest level in the game. And they are fifth. Well, they know it's over anyways. But it's a good example of how you want to play when it's super chaotic early on. GG's. Let's go, third game. Oriana. And uh, we are pretty much a paper team against two tanks. Which I assume, so they have really good balance of, you know, Frontline, carries, heal as well with the Orianna. So they have a pretty solid comp. But, you know, comp does not always matter. But if enemy comp is too broken and you have like a complete paper comp, for example, you had a Twitch support, you know, like a Kindred Jungle, maybe like a Quinn Top or something, do just dodge. Like that, that is not worth it. If you have a normal comp, it's okay. You can still make it work, but. Stuff like having more AD carries on the team and such, it is not worth it because even if you play well, you still probably are going to end up losing.
So make use of your dodges, the ones you have. You know, you have... Let's say two each day, because the third one puts you on a 12 hour dodge timer. So use them, you know. You only lose LP, you don't lose MMR. There's the Orianna matchup here, so she's running summon Eri, which is the standard go-to keystone on Orianna. She's going to poke a lot, of course start with the Q as usual. And same thing, stay behind the minions. So the Q has to pass through. And when she uses this Q, there's uh, some cooldown where you can actually walk up and farm, even though it's pretty low cooldown. But it gives you some time to walk up before you she has to queue up again. And even better, you know, if you think you're going to get hit by the Q, just do the minions or better even Orianna. And it's going to tank the damage. He's going to poke a lot. Don't sacrifice all of your HP. You have TP here, so it's okay. Normally you want to base anyways when you have enough gold for the tier. But even better if you have enough gold for a refillable as well, that would also be cool. It's actually really smart if she stops pushing now. Okay, I'm having good bot lanes. Or maybe it's luck, I don't know. So when she does this, she's, she is starting to push the wave. Running low on mana, she has biscuits, like her entire rune setup is giving her really OP laning phase. It's giving extremely broken laning phase, but she's going to fall off. That's all, so I think I'm gonna stay for this wave and then I'll back off. It's a pretty free kill for Viego as well, if he's watching the map. Which you can expect to not happen. Okay, she's taking up the way, so we're just gonna back off here. We can only get one potion. Even better that we decided to base. He's trolling. It's actually trolling. It's funny because I also ended up losing a game because of this. Died once and then starts griefing. Yikes. Oh, well, that's what I mean. You, I mean, you get a lot of trolls, but the opponents will also get, even though it feels very rare for that to happen. Well, I guess in this game, there's not really much to explain. Yet, at least. But the Orianna matchup is it's pretty simple, you know, when you play against mages. What Kassan struggles against are these AD champs. And the most annoying one is Tristana, you cannot lane at all. Against the Tristana it's impossible to lane. This matchup becomes easier when you get level 6 because the moment she queues forward you can ult forward and then wait better against her. She has TP, that's why she's taking these traits. But if she can stay on till I get level 6, that would be insane. But the game right now, it's way too snowbally. Way too snowbally. And so it means that you cannot always afford to go for Rod of Ages on Castle, and the other item makes you pretty strong early on. That's why it's so good. Besides being broken too, it actually helps you with the early game. Okay, Senna went back. Ariana's level 6, so she wants to um, reset and then she wants to TP back so she can keep out the pressure. I'm gonna take this here. 
See if I can push this. I probably can't. He's gonna TP back. Using the ability so um he comes up faster. Right. We managed to push it out. Gonna recall further back here in case she walks up and tries to uh cancel it. We're gonna go for this item right here, so it's not a risk matchup like it was in the last game against the Zed. And also getting Boots early on. It's a skill shot matchup. Boots early on helps big time. Ooh, does she have W? Nope. Playing well, but... Don't run this way. Don't run this way, bro. She's so dead. Rihanna's gonna yoink her. Maybe not. Where's the Rihanna? Where's the Rihanna at? There she is. We see her now. So when you want to trade against her after level 6, the moment you Q's forward, that's when you are run in. Like this. Oh, she cannot take her E back or like her... Um... She has to use E in order to call it back, but she cannot Q it forward. That's going to be a short cooldown. Luckily, I managed to ult away from that one, otherwise I would have taken a lot of damage. If the fruits are up... Yes, they won't be. Nope, they're not. So, um, she goes spot for a while and then she comes back mid. Worst part is that they actually lost 2 versus 2. It's not like... Diego did anything at all, so I don't understand. But right now would be a good example to engage. So if she uses Q again on the minions, then I can forward, go forward and get a combo and then E her to slow and then you just back off. Like this. I knew she was going to Q because the minions were low HP. Now she can ult. Use the ultimate into the flash. Goodbye to the Oriana. And when she starts dying in the lane, too much DGs for her. Gonna place a ward, and also when you play this, cast it and build the skills much earlier than the Rod of Ages, you'll be able to snowball faster. Let's get the lost chapter. No flash on the Orianna, no ultimate, and this is what you have to do after level 6. A lot of the times you can predict her queuing, you know, sending that ball forward. When your minions are low HP and, you know, there are multiple minions low HP. Because you want to last it, that's when you queue for, uh, ult forward. And she can call um, that thing back with an E, but it's only going to shield and a little bit of damage. Does it again? We're going to do the same thing, but wait for your abilities to come up. Oh my days. Oh my days. Okay, we'll TP back. We will just TP back, it's okay. No need a reason to stay. Godlane's winning, so I don't really care. She's mid. Doesn't matter to me at all. Hero's also winning. Otherwise, they would have a pretty uh, obnoxious team to play against. Maybe I talk to Ilion.
Well, seems like I won't be able to go for the kills. Lux does not need to commit because I can farm regardless, so it's okay. He should be up there. Can I take another wave? Is it the kind of wave that actually sucks a bit? I should definitely have recalled here. Takes too long to push. Noriana is not going to lose a lot, if anything at all, because um, she recalled early on. Alright, so she got first spike. We don't have enough gold for this item. The thing, I just get the tier 2s. Normally I don't do this. But... I think the tier 2s helps a lot against these matchups. And also helps me get my TP up faster. You could have went for this item. The Codex. Cause some damage, but I'm winning anyways. I think the mobility is great. So Senna's recalling, she's not going to be here. But you know, against these skill shop matchups, guys, I actually like to get tier 2s earlier. You see, the only thing she can do is to call the um, ball back with the E. Going down, Viego is holding mid. With holding, I mean pushing. Oh, but he's a bit blind. Should not be this blind as a jungler. It was a free kill as well because the flash was not up yet. There was still a couple seconds left to go. That's what you call tunnel visioning on the minion wave. trade that's what you had to do do this a couple times and you're good to go don't have to worry too much about her ultimate I could probably flash her but um, Senna is most definitely going to be mid and waiting to pick up a kill Most definitely not going to be alone. Because she's not bot. That means she's mid. An enemy has been slain. I think I'll stay for another wave. And it's only Wally Bear. Can he chase me? He probably can if I hold forward. Okay, he's bot. Right, we can go ahead and back off here. Wow, she came back fast. What? Is it TP? It's worth it, man. It's it's such a massive item. But man, she came back to lane insanely fast. Yikes. I guess that was TP. But I feel like she just TP'd recently. I don't know. Okay, so low cooldown on the ultimate. So now we can pretty much just run her down. Just wait, you know, getting level 11. Might as well just wait for that, but this item makes a really strong Olyon. Gonna flash out. I do it like this, and she's out. Goodbye to Oriana. And I think I just go ahead and back off here, just in case, you know. Four stacks on the ultimate, so I only have one use, and then it's I don't have enough mana. Right. Remember to use a couple ultimate stacks back to lane because it really it can really make a difference. It might mean that you actually get the cannon minion or not. Ooh, there goes the gin.
Okay, she has tier twos. Oh, what? He flashed out? It's like, it's really strong early game for the Orianna. Like, her landing phase is really strong. So it's normal that she can, you know, get a pretty large lead early on with a CS. But she has been AFK pushing a lot and it should not happen. Uh, be allowed if your jungler is playing around you sometimes. Just wait for your spikes. In this case, that was that first item. Now take the blue. And also go ahead and look and see if any fruits are there, then I don't have to constantly recall. And yeah, that just went down. And I'm moving, let's give him some vision. He's not. I'm taking a lot of poke every single time I get hit by that item. Shut down, that's the center. Would like to stay. Can I get the rip off? That would be insane, actually. And heal up a little bit. If all bears here, that actually sucks. Alright. Then I have exhaust, so yes, she can kill me. But if she doesn't, then I can push her down pretty easily. Alright, now we can just uh, recall and CP back. Or I can wait and push this wave because um, Orena just respawned. No mind, I can't. Yes, yeah, you feel a massive difference when you're going for this item instead of the Rod of Ages early on. You feel like a million times stronger. Got a lot more mobile. I just stay, it's okay, and rip off helping with the healing. Two people bot side, so nothing to worry about yet. Got CP for them, no, Viego is there, so it's fine. No need to move. But um, the teams you'll be getting, of course, it's going to be very different for each game. How well the players are performing and such. But if you notice one thing, I'm al always playing consistent. That means that I'm not getting massively destroyed in the lane, I'm al always farming up well. And you know, looking for opportunities around the map later on, getting kills for myself. And that's all that matters, because if you can do that every single game, that is what will allow you to climb by being consistent. It's the most important thing. If you consistently perform well, you're going to win a lot more games. Sometimes you get good teams, sometimes you get awful ones. Not sometimes, very often you get awful ones. So if you're able to play consistently, you are going to win a lot of games. Ultimate Flash. Is so fast. Not ulting here because of. A lot of people coming. And also because I had a lot of stacks, so I would run out of mana pretty fast as well. And it's why it's so important that. I go for presence of mind all the time, because even if you're low on mana, as long as you get a takedown, you can keep going. You cannot do that to the uh, build with the first strike. It's almost full stack. Oh, okay, I need the one on the wall bar. I think I'm just gonna go for a full glass cannon, so 
Death Cap, next item. Don't feel like I need the safety here because they are so far behind the enemy team. And it's only one exhaust anyways. And I almost always go for the Ionians. Because of the ability haste on abilities as well as summoners and their boots are also cheaper. And I've been saying this for years now, these boots are OPM. They're actually really OPM. Oh, he's going in. He does not have ults. Shut off, since we have the Jin. Oops. A trillion. Just gonna wait for my ultimate to expire now. Cannot afford to use too many fully ultimate stacks. But I like to sometimes just sit in the brush, for example, when the drag is up. Sometimes the opponents just stack up when they're moving towards an objective they don't have vision on. Then I like to just sit in the bush and stack up the ultimate and then just blast them in a one combo. I think they should just let us push and end. Dorian is probably just gonna ult and pick up a kill. Or try to pick up a kill. And not letting us end is a bit waste of time because Senna is griefing anyways. So it's better for all of us that we just get to a uh, one. Well, GG's for this game. And that is it for this episode, guys. See y'all in the next one.